Hi guys, so here's Interim Financial Reporting Chapter 28 of Conceptual Framework and Accounting Standard Subject. So, I download the PDF file. I have provided the soft copy if you do not have. Okay, so if you are having a hard time in tindihin the theories, ito yung ating video lecture para to help you with the lesson. Okay, hindi ko makaya pinababayaan. Okay, anyway, I miss you guys. So, let's start. Interim financial reporting, ano po siya? There, interim financial reporting is actually the preparation of your FS at certain periods of the year. Okay? So, for example, monthly, quarterly, and semi-annual. Ang ruling accounting standard na nag sa kanya is past 34. Okay? So, you have to remember that. So, monthly, every month. Quarterly, so you divide the whole year into three. So, three quarters ang isang taon. And sa isang quarter, kaya siya quarter, apat na buwan ang sakop. Okay? So, in semi-annual, you have six months. Okay? Half a year. So, yun. So, sa interim financial reporting, ang most common is quarterly FS. Why? Tumingin kayo sa kalendaryo, yung mga play na kalendaryo, yung mga bl may blue ang font, tapos pag special yung araw, yung red, may makikita kayo sa baba, nakalagay doon date, tapos submission of uh, quarterly uh, FS for VAT something, VAT payable, deadline of mga ganun. Okay, nandun yung schedule ng pagbabayad ng uh, VAT and submission of quarterly FS para i-confirm if magkano ang VAT na babayaran or i-remit ng isang negosyo. Okay? If you have remembered sa ABM mo, ABM lessons, you have input VAT and output output VAT. Yung resulting nun, yun yung i-remit mo kay BIR. Okay? So, yun. That's tax. Then, publicly listed entities are encouraged to make semi-annual. So, bukod sa quarterly, they need to make semi-annual. Encourage lang. Hindi sila uh, pinipilit. Pero, encourage in order for the stockholders, for the public, for the shareholders dahil may hawak sila ng shares to know the performance of the company for half a year. Para alam nila kung anong gagawin nila sa stocks nila. Okay? But again, publicly listed entities are those companies who are putting their stocks in the market and anyone who can buy, anyone can buy their stocks. Okay? So, past 34, walang prescribed na entities kung sino ang required mag-publish ng interim financial reports. Okay? However, si SEC and PSE may dalawa siyang laws. Okay? nire-require nila yung mga entities na nag-qualify dun sa dalawang laws na binabanggit, the Revised Securities Act and the Rules on Commercial Papers and Financing Act, they are required to submit quarterly interim FS. Okay, okay. SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the PSA, the Philippine Stock Exchange, okay, para they have complied with the law. Okay, next. You have components of interim financial report. So, anong laman ng interim financial report? Para siyang isang libro. Sa loob ng libro, ang laman is the following. Okay? So, para lang isang annual financial statements report. Okay? Meron kang statement of financial position, comprehensive income, changes in equity, cash flow, and selected explanatory notes. Ano yung condensed? Okay? Ang condensed, hindi yung milk. Yung condense is actually all of your financial transactions from the date covered sa current year plus yung previous years. Para siyang cumulative. Okay? Pero ang tawag sa kanya is condense. Okay? Pwede kasi siyang uh, from January to April. Tapos ang condense FS mo is from April to to June, o kaya naman is from December to April, mga ganun. Okay. Pag cumulative kasi running balance, pag condensed, parang pinagsama-sama siya sa isang yung coverage ng buong taong, eh, yung interim period na yun. Okay, that's condensed. Uh, pwede ka daw mag-create ng separate income statement if merong mga special transactions na pumapasok sa profit or loss, which is component of statement of comprehensive income. Okay? Pwede yun. 
components of interim financial report. So, yung condensed headings and subtotal presented in the FS most recent annual FS is required. Yun yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na yung from pwede siyang kinocover niya yung last year, pwede siyang kinocover yung kaunti from the last year kasi sakop siya nung quarterly FS, interim FS, that's condensed. Okay, headings and subtotal present. Okay? Okay, so, ang condensed to, uh, I would just like to add, meron siyang, uh, di i-represent niya yung quarterly, katabi niya yung, yung from last year. Okay, para alam na, ah, ito pala yung, yung annual report last year. So, uh, para malaman nyo kung ano itsura niya, punta kayo sa website ng isa, for example, punta kayo sa website ni Jollibee Foods Corporation. Hanapin nyo sa website yung kanilang uh, statement of uh, and financial statements, downloadable yon Makikita nyo yung quarterly report nila. Ang pag makikita mo yung columns, merong quarterly report, then katabing column is from last year, annual FS. Okay, naka-project din siya. So, yun yung sinasabing headings and subtotal are presented to. Okay, para to compare at the very least from this last year's performance, is it doing well quarterly, maganon. Okay? Then, past 34 allows an entity to publish a set of condensed FS or complete set of FS in the interim financial report. So, may choice ka if condensed or complete. When you say complete, wala kang, walang subtotals and headings presented from last year. Okay, pag condense, sinasama mo yung from last year. Headings and subtotals. Okay, disclosure of compliance with PFRS. So, you need to disclose interim FS compliance with PFRS. Okay, so kailangan sabihin mo na kahit interim siya, sumusunod pa rin ako sa lahat ng accounting standards. Okay, especially past 34, which is interim financial reporting. Okay, selected explanatory notes. So, these are the Kasi, di ba, meron tayong notes to financial statements. Hindi mo kailangan gumawa ng isang buong notes to financial statements if hindi naman talaga uh, kailangan. So, ang gagawin mo lang is selected explanatory notes. So, ano ito? Designed to provide an explanation of significant events and transaction arising since the last annual financial statements. So, from here, for example, you're going to present quarterly FS. Ano yung mga nangyari? Events after the reporting period, you can add them as selected explanatory notes for your quarterly FS. Bakit nagkaganon? Bakit biglang bumulos, bumulosok, pataas? O bakit ka nang biglang bumagsak? No? Maybe because of COVID-19. In the past quarter, there was an emergence of a pandemic. O mga ganun. Okay? Just make sure that users have access to the entity's most recent annual report. Okay, so if you look at Jollibee Foods Corporation's website, marami doon, nandun pa rin yung FS nila from last year's. Okay? Okay, so superfluity reasons, that's why you have to include the most recent annual report is because superfluity. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng superfluity? Yung, yung may continuity. Mayroong uh, um, superfluity meron siyang continuance meron siyang uh, alam mo yung pag nagsusulat ka ng isang essay yung hindi pwedeng uh, ito ay red tapos biglang sa sunod ay ako ay maganda wala man lang transition okay so kumbaga Oh, wait lang, wait lang. Technical, technical. Walang, uh, walang unoccupied time. Walang dead air. Okay? Hinanap ko kasi yung, yung word. Walang dead air siya. Superfluity. Okay? So, in, in accounting, meron siyang, pwede siyang, wala yung unnecessary gap. Wala din yung excessively large amount na from last years na parang alam niyo yun yung parang masyadong magulo parang yung sinasabi ni ma'am <laughs> okay superfluity para walang dead air ang ating reporting yung kumbaga walang 
Ay, ano yung from last year? Ano yung ganito? Okay, so, yun yun. Okay. Presentation of comparative interim statements. So, sa statement of financial position, kasi may requirements eh. Kumbaga, if you're going to do interim, ano pa yung iba mong gagawin? So, when you're doing interim FL, financial position, you need to prepare at the end of the current interim period. So, if you're doing monthly at the end of the month, quarterly at the end of the quarter, and uh, semi-annual, the end of the semi-annual period. And also, you need to do comparative FS at the end of the preceding year. Okay? So, you have to present two. The comparative FS from last year okay so financial position lang yun ah so paano naman daw pag income statement you have to prepare current interim cumulative for the current financial year to date so from last year um for example january to ang nagawa mong in monthly is January, February, March. So, you need to prepare for uh, April. So, ang laman ng April monthly mo is cumulative from January. So, yun yung ibig sabihin yung cumulatively for the current financial year to date. Okay? Then, comparative FS for the comparable interim period last year. So, kung gumawa ka ng FS ng April, you need to present also yung interim period ng April last year. And, Cumulatively, ang daming gawain, di ba? You need to uh, present also yung cumulative balance nung last year. Okay? For the same April period. Para madaling mag-compare ng FS. Di ba? Apat ang trabaho mo. <laughs> okay? Then next, you have statement of comprehensive income. So, it's the same. Interim, cumulative, comparative from last year, interim, and then comparative FS from last year's cumulative, okay? Cumulative to date, okay? So, yon. Then, next, you have statement of changes in equity. So, sa statement of changes in equity, you have cumulative for the current financial year to date. So, from a kung magagawa ka ng April, you need to do cumulative. So, yung laman ng April is from nangyari ng January to April. That's cumulative. And then, comparative statement. Comparable for financial year to date of last year. So, yun din. Comparable FS cumulative from last year. Okay. Then, next, you have statement of cash flows. The same. Cumulative and comparative. Basic principles. So, what do you need to know in order for you to do this properly? So, you do, uh, you need to know na the accounting principles that apply to annual uh, measurement basis will also be true to interim. Okay? Then, revenues from products sold shall be measured on the same basis as for the annual period. So, if... The same lang din uh, in, the, in recognizing revenue, paano mo ginagawa pag annual? Okay, so ganun. Then, sa expenses naman, we have two categories. Kapag directly associated with the revenue, imamatch siya. Matching principle with the, the expenses should match the revenues na dumating. Okay, and then yung hindi associated kailangan i-allocate mo yon over the periods na nag-benefit. Ibig sabihin, kung nagamit mo January to April na, na um, expenses at hindi siya associated sa revenue, you have to allocate from January to April. Kung ang kontrata niya is for 24 years, 24 years, 24 months. So, you need to allocate from January to April. Parang adjusting. Okay? So, yun. Next, if highly seasonal business, yung may peak season lang. Okay? Disclose mo yung financial information for the latest 12 months, comparative info prior to 12-month period, and preparation of interim FS requires greater estimation than annual financial report. So, you need to estimate. Actually, interim financial reporting is based on estimation lang uh, most of the time. Uh, compared sa annual, 
uh, mas greater ang estimation na gagawin mo sa interim kaysa sa annual. Why? Kasi there are anticipated and deferred expenses. Okay, when you say anticipated or deferred expenses, nire-recognize mo na siya kahit wala pang nangyayaring expense. Okay, remember the deferrals and accruals in your adjusting. The deferrals are those who are deferred. Ibig sabihin, kahit hindi pa dumat dumadating, ina-advance mo na siya. Anticipated. Okay, so ganun. So, for example, sa inventories, we know that it is measured at LC and RV. And write-down should be disclosed and the reversal of such is in a later interim period. So, if nag-write-down ka ng quarterly, you have to disclose na nag-write-down ka for that quarter. And then, for the next quarter, if nawala yung write-down mo, bumalik sa dati yung kanyang, kanyang value, i-disclose mo din yung reversal. Okay? Then, seasonal, cyclical, or occasional revenue. So, hindi mo dapat ina-anticipate to. Okay, for example, for January, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na ang sales mo for February because you're a flower shop is at 1 million pesos. Okay? Because of Valentine's Day. No. Do not anticipate it. Not anticipated or deferred if not appropriate by the end of the reporting period. Okay, then, so yung examples, we have dividend revenue. When you say dividend re revenue, it's may matatanggap kang dividends from your investment. Do not anticipate that. Okay, royalties, may matatanggap ka na, for example, your JK Rowling. Okay, F for next year, may matatanggap kang royalties from your books. Do not anticipate that. Or okay, re require that, knowing na meron na siyang TV series on uh, proposed TV series. He cannot anticipate the royals na magi increase from those who want to buy his books kapag biglang nag boom yung TV show ng Percy Jackson. Okay? Hindi niya pa anticipate yun. Okay? Then government grant, do not anticipate revenues from the government. Okay? So yun. Next, uneven cost. When you say uneven cost, they are actually yung uneven. Yung hindi siya constant per month. Okay? So, pwede siyang anticipated kapag appropriate na i-anticipate yung type ng cost. Okay? So, for example, provision of warranty. Ang alam natin, when pag ikaw ay negosyo, at nag-anticipate ka ng warranty, uneven cost siya, okay? Uh, futuristic yung kanyang dating, okay? Si warranty. So, mag-anticipate ka na na gantong amount yung babalik sa akin for warranty. Like, 60%, 70%, pwede siyang i-anticipate. Okay? Pwede siyang i-defer. Na pwede mo na siyang i-recognize as your expense for the current current time, kahit wala pang actual warranty expense. Okay, because that's the nature of warranty. Okay, for those cost of plant major maintenance, you cannot anticipate this kahit uh, kasi kailangan nangyari na yung maintenance bago mo i-incur yung expense. Okay, parang sinabi mong pagkatapos ng COVID after 2 months, bibili ako ng sapatos. So, pag bumili ang sapatos, worth 5,000 pesos, uh, tatanggalin ko na siya sa aking, sa aking, uh, i-withdraw ko na siya sa aking negosyo at i-incur ko na siya as my expense. Hindi pwede yun. Kasi yung type niya, yung type ng pagbili ng sapatos is not actually the type na kailangan anticipated wala sa nature niya so when when it is incurred dun lang yung period na pwede mo siyang i-record okay then advertising expense so sa advertising expense naman um usually hindi siya ina-anticipate not anticipated din to so for example ay si Catherine Bernardo pa lang kukunin namin by December ng ano na advertiser so ang talent fee nila ganyan ganyan i-record ko na nga kaya ngayong first quarter of the year kahit December pa naman sila babayaran hindi pwede yun okay hindi siya yung type na kailangan anticipated yung uneven cost na yun okay 
year-end bonuses. This is given to employees. So, anticipated, may dalawang category if siya ay legal obligation. Ibig sabihin, nasa kontrata. Okay? Or, siya ay past practice. Ibig sabihin, nagbibigay ka sadya every December ng uh, Christmas bonus. So, i-anticipate mo na. And, you can reliably measure it. Okay? If for 10 years you are giving away 5,000 Christmas bonus to all of your employees, then anticipate it. Pero if not, at nahiligan mo lang ngayon taon at biglang nagulat ang mga empleyado mo, do not anticipate. Bakit? Hindi siya pumasok sa conditions ng anticipation of year-end bonuses. Okay? Then irregular cause, when you say irregular, hindi constant. Okay? Never anticipate. Recorded at the date incurred. Yun lang kailangan nyo malaman. Then, depreciation and amortization. You have shall only be made for those assets owned during the interim interim period. Hindi to anticipated. Saan ka nakakita ng depreciation na anticipated? Okay. Paid vacation and holiday leave. So, ito yung mga panahong pwede kang wag pumasok pero bayad ka pa rin. Okay enforceable as legal commitments and therefore it must be accrued so for example um yung yung empleyado mo bigla nag leave pero paid i-accrue man na yun tapos kapasok siya doon sa monthly interim FS mo i-accrue mo na yun na nag leave siya o kaya nag file siya ng leave kahit hindi pa pasok doon sa kumbaga ay nag file siya ng leave for April okay so Pag ganun, i, i mo na siya. Okay? Kasi siya ay legal commitments. Sinasabi yan sa batas. Okay? Next, gain and loss. So, sa gain and loss, you have the gain is reported in the interim period realized and loss is reported in the interim period when incurred. Ibig sabihin, do not anticipate. Okay? Kung kailan lang nangyari, dun mo lang siya i-record na interim period. Income tax. So, sa income tax, you have, it should be accrued using the annual effective income tax rate applied to the pre-tax income of the interim period. This is what is unique with it. Kung ano yung annual tax rate, yung pa rin yung gagawin mo for interim period. Okay? So, yun. Again, kung ano yung annual income tax rate, yung pa rin yung i-apply mo sa interim period. Okay? So, effective tax rate of a particular tax year is applied to the pre-tax income of the interim period in the same tax year. So, kunwari, nag-interim ka ng uh, quarter. Ay, eh, sakot ng quarter ay eh, 2019-2020. Ibig sabihin, yung income na na-compute mo for, uh, tawag din eh, for 2019 is the tax rate for 2019 and 2020 is for 2020. Okay? So, yan. Tax year is applied to the pre-tax income of the interim period in the same tax year. So, ganun siya. Okay? So, ma'am, there will be times na interim periods magkakaiba, yes. Magkakaiba ang in tax rate, yes. Okay? Changes in accounting policy. So, when you change an accounting policy, you have to reflect it sa FS ng prior interim period yung kasunod and for the current comparative interim period okay again kailangan i-restate mo yung prior comparative and for the current year interim period kapag hindi mo ginawa yun ito yung mga consequences you have interim oh, Interim allocation difficulties, obscured operating results, complicated analysis, and failure of understandability for interim information. Okay? So, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Okay? So, yun. I hope you're all fine. And, yun lang. Okay, bye-bye. See you sa next lesson. Bye!